So, I think um, interdisciplinarity causes a lot of confusions, um, in my world anyway, where people often think that we're um, just adding things together as if the disciplines were what they used to be and we just want to improve things by, by bringing them together. And um, I sort of think that that's, we know that that's not right, but that's the only way that we can sort of think about it quite often. And um, maybe what's really happening is sort of an addition and a subtraction at the same time, that we, we feel quite uncomfortable with our disciplines, not um, because they're arbitrary and contingent, um, and we're not sure why they're there because of that, but I think really because we feel that they're too linear, that they're too constraining, that they're specialising us too much. And in fact, it's the, it's the sort of history, the progress, the, the internal relationality of disciplines that makes them disciplines that we think is problematic. So I think today, particularly, when we talk about interdisciplinary work, we're thinking about how we free ourselves from the disciplines and reach out to the world more. And in doing that, of course, um, there's a lot of different methodological, epistemological, ontological assumptions that go with that, that we're not bringing things together, i.e. developing a theory on a larger level, because we're also dismantling at the same time, we're focusing more on the ground and specifics and pluralities and differences and contingencies, that in fact it's the contingencies and the arbitrariness of the world that often we're trying to grapple with. Now, that would sound like, I don't know, that I'd swallowed a bit of Deleuze and mixed it with Latour or something like that, except for the fact that the world is doing that itself. It's like policy makers and governments uh, and the problems of the world that call for interdisciplinarity that isn't really disciplinarity. If we think about where the money is going in terms of research, where publishers want to publish, what are the, sort of the new series is that they're uh, generously trying to set up uh, to help the world, what the sort of issues that they're concerned with, I don't know, big data, resilience, complexity, um, different issues that don't really have a space in any so-called discipline. And um, why is that? Because we're thinking about a world that if it is more complex and interrelated or more like the Anthropocene, where there are limits to traditional understandings and traditional knowledge, and we have to drill down to look at the problems in themselves, then it's pretty clear that we need to have a different name for these problems, and we need to rethink how we publish and make money and serve the world and provide useful frameworks in different sorts of ways. So I think it's sort of the more we think about it as interdisciplinary, I think often we miss the thing. And we know that uh, books that aren't traditionally disciplinary books, books that are thinking about problems and events in the world, they sell, not only do they sell a lot, but um, they're fairly compelling. I don't know, in my field of international relations, we used to do disciplinary things and division, how to do democracy and security, and development. Maybe this is a good example of how it impacts really on an academic. And then we had specialists trained in what it means to promote democracy and what it was and how to be an expert and go over, write training manuals and theorise the theory of security and development. And then over the last 20 years or so, the world has said to us, well, all that knowledge that you've extracted and specialised doesn't actually work. When we apply it to different bits of the world, very different things happen. We need a different sort of knowledge, not your specialist knowledge like that, generalising upwards, extracting it, separating it. We need the knowledge of the world, the embedded knowledge, the knowledge of these societies in these particular times and these particular places. And also we need to think about the interactions between what you call democracy, security and development. So if you think that, it's sort of just the opposite of what disciplinary knowledge was. Disciplinary knowledge was democracy, development, security, have their own inner relationships and how we learn lessons about doing specific things in silos. The world tells us that it's not like that, that the environment is related to development, is related to democracy, is related to rights, is related to earthquakes, all the rest of it. So specialist knowledge becomes non-knowledge. 
it becomes ignoring actually all the relationships and the interconnections. And, the, and not only that, but in specialising, you're obviously forgetting the world and the context that you're applying it to. I mean, that's just a pretty basic example of major policy areas that I work with. It. And in doing that, of course, it forces us to develop a different set of expertise, which the more grounded our knowledge is, the more it is we have to bring in other people, but not necessarily other disciplines. We have to bring in local people, users, stakeholders, all the rest of it. We think about how even what we call knowledge is always mediated and produced in different ways and has to be changed, I don't know, from test tubes to in different types of field. Anyway, so these are all just really basic points about, I guess, our exhaustion of what we call disciplines and how our sort of trying to escape from those is trying to add knowledge but trying to sort of subtract as well from the isolation of our disciplines. And maybe if we were thinking of it in a sort of populist way, we could say like we need to check our disciplines, like I don't know if you've come across checking our privileges. The idea that when we had disciplines, we thought they just worked independently and autonomously. They just had their own little histories that we could just know our discipline and we'd be okay. Whereas now we would say, that was a pretty privileged position. That was a position where you didn't have to actually apply anything, you didn't have to take any responsibility, where you got awards just for you know, doing good work within your own isolated communities. And so what we call interdisciplinarity it might be exciting in terms of forcing academia into the world. And people say um, that all our new disciplines will be cross-fertilized and contaminated and uh, flexible and creative, and, um, and also more curious, but um, we would start thinking entirely differently about the methods that we applied and what we considered academic work to be. But obviously in that sort of a world, there's also negative things in terms of what we call academia and academic training and how we do peer review and the whole separation of academia from the world, which used to be a good thing. Being in an ivory tower, we fought very hard for our ivory towers and our privileges. And those things are obviously under question at the same time. So, like with everything, I guess, there's swings and roundabouts to interdisciplinarity. But there's no doubt that as the world is calling for a shift, money will be made in doing that. Publishers will also do that. And our courses and our disciplines will be shaped accordingly, and our academic training will as well. So I don't think we need to worry about it. You know, that um, seems rather compelling and over-determined that all sorts of ways we work in academia will have to change, not merely because of technology and our ability to print more differently and to access texts uh, electronically. Um, so I don't need the other two minutes necessarily. <laughs> Um, oh, you didn't <laughs> I, could sort of, I could go on, but I think I feel like stopping there. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, thanks. Thank